Hello everyone, I'm Ingram from Alquan. Great to see you all again. Now, so far in Ninja Trader, we have gone through things like where to get it, how to use it for charting, and how to add in technical indicators. And that was in the first video. Then in the second video, we back tested a simple moving average crossover strategy, and then we look at how to optimize the parameters to give us the best results. All right. So if you missed out on all these earlier videos, not to worry. You can just go to our channel, and all the videos will be there. And as for today, we'll be talking about profit targets and stop losses. We'll first start with a short refresher and then we'll see how we can implement these things inside NinjaTrader itself. All right, ready? Let's start. What is profit target? Now, very simple. Let's use an example. So what we have here is a chart on SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. And let's say for some reason you think SPY is going to rally from here onwards. So you bought SPY at a price of 265. Okay, and at the same time, you don't think the rally will be anything much more than 20%. So what can you do here? You can set a profit target of 20%. So that means you will close off your position and lock in the profits if SPY hits a price of 318, right? Because 318 represents a 20% rally from your entry price. All right, so this is what profit target is, exactly as per what the name implies. Then what is stop loss? Now using back the same example, you may also want to limit your damage in case you're wrong, because SPY could end up falling instead of rallying, right? And let's say you don't want your loss from the trade to exit too far from 10%. So what you can do is to put in the stop loss order 10% below your entry price of 265. So that means this order will be triggered when the price of SPY drops to 238.5, whereupon a market order will then be sent out to close up all your positions at the prevailing market price then. All right, this is what a stop loss order is. Now let's see how the trade plays out with all these orders in place. As it turns out, SPY actually falls quite sharply after you put on the trade and it hits your stop loss of 238.5. So you get stopped out. And assuming you're able to close out all your trades also at a stop price, then for this trade, you made a loss of 10%. Now, if you look further, SPY actually rallies shortly after you are stopped out and then went all the way to hit your profit target of 318 and beyond. So in this case, right, you might think that if you don't have a stop loss or if you have a larger stop loss, you would have turned out profitable. But having said that, you will never know because all these things are on high side. SPY could have kept falling and then the stop loss you have could have saved you from even more damage. Now, stop loss and profit targets are not just set based on what you want, all right, because markets don't work according to what you want. The optimal level to use for any stop loss or profit targets will depends on things like the assets you're trading, how volatile it is, the time horizon of trade, and the type of strategies that you're running. All right, so it have to be tested and optimized as part and parcel of your overall strategies. But then what about trailing stop loss? Now trailing stop loss is a type of stop loss that is designed to preserve profits. Now, it moves up together with the price of the security you are trading and is always measured with reference from the highest price reach. Now let's say for example we set a trailing stop loss of 15% on SPY. So when you start this is where your stop loss is going to be at. And as SPY rolls over time your trailing stop loss also moves up along with it until here. And subsequently you see the SPY makes a drastic fall, right? But your trailing stop loss don't move down, it stays where it is. And once SPY falls to the stop loss level, the order is triggered and all your positions are closed out. So in such an event where SPY makes a U-turn, at least you get to retain some of the profits you made. Now let's look at how we can incorporate a profit target and a stop loss inside a simple moving average crossover strategy that we did up in the last video, right? So to do that, let's go to the tools options at the top menu, right? Click on it, then go to edit ninja script, then select strategy, right? And within this window, look for SMA crossover. Once you find it, select it and click on OK. And this is going to bring up the strategy wizard. Click on next right and then click on next again right and within the user defined inputs we're going to define two more parameters the profit target and the stop loss all right the first thing i'm going to do is to define the profit target all right profit target and the data type for profit target should be double because we're going to define percentages down here 
default value, I'm just going to set it as 1, which means 100% profit target level. And the minimum, right, let's say I'm just going to set it as 0 0.05, which means the minimum profit target that I want to look out for is 5%. And I'm just going to give a description of profit target level, right? Then moving on, we have the stop loss. Stop loss, all right? And its data type is also a double. And then we're going to give a default stop loss value of 0 0.25, which means 25% stop loss level. And the minimum stop loss level, I'm also going to stop, uh, I'm still going to give it 0 0.05, uh, which means 5%. And here it is stop loss level. Okay, so once we defined here in the user inputs, we can click on next. Okay, these are the rules. We don't need to change anything here. Click on next again. Okay, and over at this particular uh, page, stop loss and profit targets, this is where we need to add in the rules. So I'm going to add in the first one, add in the profit target. All right, and the mode is percent, that is correct. And the value, just click on it and then click on this place here and then select my user defined inputs. Expand on it and then we select profit target. Click on OK and then OK. So the profit target rules has been selected down here. Then next we need to add in the stop loss rule, right? So add in the stop loss rule here. Click on this button, select stop loss. Okay, again, come to this value here, click on it and select here, right? And then we will select the stop loss user defined inputs. Click on OK and then click on OK again, and then click on Next, and Finished. Okay, and basically we're done with generating the new strategy, which now incorporates a profit target level of 100% and a stop loss level of 25%. Now, what if we wanted a trailing stop loss instead of a stop loss? Right then, it's very simple. Basically, the steps are the same. You can just go back and reactivate the uh, strategy wizard and then come to this particular window here where you ask the input the user to find inputs. So over here I can just uh, give it a different name, call it trailing stop loss. All right, and this will be the trailing stop loss level. All right, and then click on next, then click on next again, then we come back to the stop loss and profit target rules. And over here, the set stop loss, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete away this rule. Okay, I'm going to add in a new one. And this time around, I'm going to add in the trailing stop, all right? And over here, the value, select on it and click here again. And then we're going to select this new thing, which is the trailing stop loss. Click on OK, then OK again, click on Next, and then Finished. Okay, and then we're done, all right? So this is how you add in the trailing stop loss within the strategy itself. So how do we go about knowing how this new strategy is going to perform. Well, we can do that by just simply running and backtesting the strategy again, right? Like how we did it back in the previous video, right? To do that, we can just go to the file at the top menu, right? Select on it, then select new, go to strategy analyzer, right? And over on the left hand panel, we're going to look for my list and then we expand on it, select SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, right click on it and select backtest. Right, and over on the right hand side, look for the strategy SMA crossover. And if you notice under the parameters, we now have two new parameters there's the profit target, and there's also the trading stop loss, which you can now play around with by uh, varying the different parameters. Okay, and over on the time, we just select day, right, because we are working with daily data, and the time frame we can select it to start from the year 2000. Right, and once all these are defined, right, just run the back test. Okay, and the results will be out for you to analyze. Okay, if I recall correctly, this result is actually worse off than the one without uh, without the profit targets and stop loss. Okay, but I'll leave the rest around for you to explore and play around with. Okay, I've come to the end of this video. Thank you for staying with me. Now, if you like this video, do us a favor, hit on the like button and subscribe to our channel if you have not done so. And if you want to find out more about what we do at All Quan, do drop by our website. The link is in the YouTube description below. Finally, all the best and I'll see you in the next video.